Good morning, everybody. Good morning, grandmas. Welcome to a very shadowy Money Monday. I really, really wanted to keep it car related by doing a car video, but the car video that I want to make is so long and very unorganized right now. I didn't want to put you guys through that. So we're just going to do a simple five ways to start saving money now. Some of you may already know these things. You may already do these things. Maybe somebody doesn't know one of them. Number one is to start cooking. I'm not the best cook. It's definitely not one of my strengths. The ingredients that you can buy from a grocery store are going to be a lot cheaper than going out to eat fast food, going out to eat restaurant food. We're thinking about cost per meal here because essentially every day, every meal costs a certain amount of money. So if you start cooking rather than going out to restaurants, you're going to be accumulating ingredients for cheaper, putting your own time, effort, and skill and art into them and turning it into a lower cost of meal. You're cutting out the labor of somebody else preparing the food for you, serving it to you, doing your dishes and the overhead the atmosphere, the restaurant, the, all the appliances there that cooked the food, whatever, you're, you're kind of cutting that out. You're probably cutting out a bunch more stuff, but there's just some things I could think of real quick. You're cutting out the labor and overhead. If you don't know how to cook, maybe that's a quality that you would want in a partner that could compliment you where you fall short. My wife, Rachel, she likes cooking when I'm there because she knows I appreciate it and I'm not good at it and I eat it. I'm not picky. I'm very simple. I'm like a ground turkey in a pan and baked potato kind of person when it comes to me cooking when she's not around. Like very and frozen gluten-free pizzas or whatever. Super simple, but definitely something to think about, especially if you're in college. And, and when you do start cooking, think about doing it in, in a lot bigger portions in bulk, getting some glassware and then doing some meal preparation and having a lot of leftovers, right? Bulk preparation and um, simple, yes, but it is definitely an easy way to start saving money, cut costs put more money in your pocket. Number two is do not rent your modem. If you have cable internet from Xfinity, Comcast, or Cox, Suddenlink, or whatever cable internet providers that have a lease option on your modem, check their website or inquire the call. Ask if you can own your modem rather than renting. Renting usually costs between five and $12 a month. You could buy one off of eBay. You could even get one from a thrift store for between five and $40. Usually, depending on your needs, depending on the speed of your internet, you could even get a combined modem router and replace the one that you're renting. That's gonna cut down between like five and $10 a month, which is 60 to $120 a year, multiplied by however many years. So you can immediately save You'll break even after a couple of months, and then from then on, you will just be saving by owning your modem rather than renting. I talk about this on Instagram all the time. It's super, super simple, but it is like a small part of your life where if you don't really own anything, God forbid if you're renting your couch, you're financing your laptop, technically you don't even own that because the bank does you're renting your apartment. We don't really own a lot of things. A lot of people don't even own their cars because we're, we're paying the bank for the cars. At least we could start somewhere small, start building a sense of ownership and a habit and by owning our modem rather than renting. It sounds small, it sounds stupid, and it sounds unimportant in the grand scheme of things, but it is a, a small foundation. If you can't get yourself to own your modem, how are you gonna get yourself to own your car or to own your house? It's a lot easier to own a modem. Number three, number three is you're going to start thinking complete shift of mindset. You're gonna start thinking that used is better than new. For everyone that follows this channel, you probably already have this mindset, but or there are many exceptions to this rule, but new is like reserved for food or underwear, socks, you know, those kind of things but you can find really good used almost anything. 
that you need. A lot of people think used shoes are gross, but you can sanitize them and people wear socks. And depending on the condition of the shoes, a lot of times people buy them and wear them once and put them in their closet. So it's, you could, assess conditions when you're buying things used and it's not gross. You can clean them. A used coffee maker, it has a bunch of coffee grounds in it. You can clean it. It's coffee. It's not going to hurt anybody. But when you buy things new, you get hit with this immediate depreciation, depending on the item. Just like a, a new car, you're going to get hit with a crazy amount of depreciation on the first year or, or immediately after you drive it off the lot. Then on the first year, second year, third year, whatever, you're going to get that depreciation. It's the same with like a phone. It's the same with, it's the same with a blender. It's the same with anything you hit. You get this, this MSRP over here is just like, it's like a funny number that we're marketed to and we're conditioned to believe buying new is what society wants. So we usually do it, but you can find a lot of times better quality things that have already depreciated and get them for a, for a lot cheaper, even below market value. Some places you're going to be buying used from rather than new, you're going to be looking on Craigslist for maybe a lawnmower instead of going to Home Depot for $300. You could buy one for $25 to $50 off of Craigslist. You go to thrift stores and find really good clothing. You have to be patient and you really have to be looking. You kind of got to know what you're looking for. When you buy things new, you're basically trading your money for convenience. You can just walk into a Walmart and buy a blender. You, you go to Google, you type in Vitamix. The first thing that comes up is Amazon. That's convenient. You get it in two days. That's also convenient. It's brand new, so there's no risk of having to clean it or test it or anything. That's convenient. If you can step around this trade-off, you can start saving money by buying things used, by learning how to test electronics from thrift stores, by searching for secondhand, uh, certain secondhand items on OfferUp or Craigslist. I'm telling you, this number three right here, if you don't know me, number three, it's a huge part of my life and it has changed my life for the better. Number four is assessing your hobbies. Are they, are they costing you a lot of money? If you, if you're making $25,000, $30,000 a year, you probably shouldn't be going to a bunch of professional sports games as your hobby or uh, racing expensive cars on a racetrack. What else are expensive hobbies? Uh, shopping is an expensive hobby. Cycling can be expensive if you make it expensive. Going out and drinking, is that a hobby of yours? Like, are you just blowing a bunch of money on alcohol on the weekends? Is that like a hobby? Just, just think about what you're doing for fun. Like ask yourself, what are my hobbies? Are they really costing you money? And are there any hobbies that you could sacrifice? You should be able to do it sometime, but maybe you can scale it back until you pay off some debt or you can cut it out completely and shift it to a more constructive hobby temporarily until you can get your finances in order, until you can get some savings. So just think about what your hobbies are. Are they, are they making you money? Um, what are some hobbies? Let me get some examples of hobbies that could actually make you money. Writing a blog could be a hobby that makes you money. It's constructive. You could do YouTube. You could make YouTube videos for very inexpensive with your phone. Just talking about things that you like, thoughts that you have, that could be a, a hobby. The gym, example of a very inexpensive hobby. A lot of gyms are going to be $30 or less a month. It's like 10 bucks for Planet Fitness. You fit, that's could a very, very constructive hobby and very inexpensive hobby. Skating and surfing, very inexpensive hobbies. Once you purchased the, the boards and if you're in the area where you can skate or surf, it's very inexpensive. You just go to the beach and you surf, you go to the skate park and you skate. What do I have? One, two, three, four, five. I'll do one more <laughs> to piggyback off of number three. Thrifting could be a hobby. This is one of my favorite hobbies, thrifting, because it makes me a bunch of money. It gets me a lot of really cool, amazing things for my friends and family. I'll, I'll write down a couple of expensive hobbies. Partying could be considered an expensive hobby. You get the costs of alcohol or the costs of cover at a club, and drinks and whatnot. So it's sucking money out of your pocket with not that much return. Um, this one's kind of silly, but hot air ballooning. <laughs> I don't think anyone watching this is doing hot air ballooning, but that is an expensive hobby. Going to the movies all the time. If that's your hobby, I don't know how much a movie ticket costs, like eight to $12. That's if you're going three to five times a week, maybe three to five times a month. Maybe you could cut back to once a week, or maybe you could cut back to once a month and watch some stuff on Netflix and on YouTube. 
obviously there's a lot more expensive hobbies like maybe going to rock concerts all the time if that's your thing vacationing or traveling all the time if that's your thing and your finances don't allow it maybe you could just stay closer to home the whole point of this is just to like exactly what i said here assess them look at them is there anything you can cut back is there anything that you want to start up is the startup cost expensive for that hobby is it going to be good for your health is it going to be good for your well-being or is it going to be destructive to your body partying is going to be destructive to your body gambling bad hobby unless you're making a ton of money on it which i doubt that you are but for the most part gambling's probably not going to be a good hobby number five number five is actually is a very actionable thing anybody could do this it's going to be called automating your savings so if you have a bank of america checking account or a chase checking account and you don't have a chase savings account a lot of times you could go to your bank open up that savings account for free tell the person at the bank or you may even be able to do this online but you're going to automatically transfer it's um it's, it's called a reoccurring transaction and it's going to happen every month on a certain date and it's going to move X amount of money into your savings. You define these parameters. You're going to say, I want to move $25 from my checking to my savings. By automating it, it makes it one less step that you actually have to do. If you physically think you're going to go in and pull out $25 every month out of your checking and put it aside, it's probably not going to happen. But if it's automated and you get your trained that it's going to happen, it just happens. Or you completely forget about it and it just happens and it's done. You don't even have to think about it. Talk to somebody at your bank, call them, go online, tell them you want a reoccurring transaction or reoccurring um, deposit maybe. I don't know what it's called. Reoccurring deposit? Reoccurring deposit, reoccurring transaction, whatever. You want it to move from here to here. Savings accounts should be free from with most banks or credit unions. They want you to keep more money and just have them create that transaction that happens and hits you every single month. You're gonna get used to it. It's gonna put money away automatically. And then it's gonna be one bigger step that you have to do to access that money. You're gonna have to transfer it back to your checking to pull it out. That extra step might act as a barrier for you not to touch it or it just automatically starts saving. So if you need to go buy a modem, you have cash to go buy your modem. Or maybe if you um, want to save up and buy a skateboard or buy a surfboard, uh, or if you want to pay for a gym membership in full for the year, you'll have it in your savings rather than having to do a month to month. Because usually when you get a gym membership, if you pay in full, you get it a little bit cheaper depending on the gym. So yeah, they barely all fit on the screen, but those are just five ways to start saving now or five simple ways that anyone could save actionable things that you can do. Maybe you do some of them already. Maybe you've never done any of these. Hopefully this video was informative to somebody out there. If you have any uh, savings tips, put them in the comment section below. I would love to hear them or maybe include them in a future video. And if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your time. I do appreciate it. And I hope you guys are saving if you're not already. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.